Hey you, have you ever wondered why each of the instruments in your song sound different to one another? What do you mean? Well, anyone can distinguish between the sound that a piano makes and that of a violin. Have you ever wondered why? Let me show you. This is due to the unique timbre that each instrument has, which is essentially a fancy word that describes the unique quality of a sound. But what actually determines it? When an instrument produces a sound, what is heard is actually a combination of different frequencies. The lowest frequency heard is called the fundamental and the higher frequencies are called the overtones. What is fascinating is that there is a defined mathematical relationship between the wavelengths of these overtones. They follow something called the harmonic series. If I play the E note on the piano, it rings at a frequency of 41 Hz. This is what the human ear perceives to be the pitch of the sound. According to the formula, the first overtone produced will have a wavelength that is half of the fundamental, and the frequency will be 82 Hz. The next overtone will have a frequency of 123 Hz, and so on and so forth. This same relationship between the overtones is observed regardless of the fundamental note played. Since the overtones themselves do not have additional overtones, they are considered as simple sine wave. Now, what if we wanted to mathematically recreate the sound played on an instrument? A function may be created through the addition of simple harmonic sine waves. This is done using the Fourier series, which allows us to define periodic waveforms in terms of trigonometric function. These are the formulas that are used. I know what you're thinking. These formulas look very complex. But don't worry, I'll give you an overview of the process. Let's say we wanted to graph the sound produced when playing the E note on this beautiful clarinet. Clarinets typically produce a wave called a square wave, and using this information, we can plug in values into these formulas and create a function for this wave. The y-axis represents the amplitude, or the volume, and the x-axis would represent time. By doing this, we would get this function. As can be seen, this function is created by simply adding sine overtones to the fundamental sine wave, and the formulas help determine the coefficients of each sine wave. So, what actually determines the timbre of an instrument? The answer lies in the fact that each overtone is heard at different volumes, depending on the instrument that you play. In a guitar, the lower overtones are louder than the higher ones, making it sound deeper compared to a clarinet. Therefore, a note on one instrument will sound different to the same note on another. By using a combination of different harmonics, sound engineers may play around and create their own unique timbres or synthesize the sounds of existing instruments. Fascinating, right? That is mind-blowing. I can definitely cook up a new banger now.